Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J show and the long awaited extra discussion is here. Before I begin, I just want to retract one statement from my 12th review of the Big Fairy Scare Share about Timmy not being able to unwish Chloe's wishes. In Imaginary Gary, Gary was technically a part of him so he could alter his own wishes. So I would like to thank these people for pointing that out for me. However, now I just have more questions. What if Chloe makes a wish that hurts Timmy? What if Chloe makes a wish that makes her lose her fairies? What if Chloe makes a wish that impacts the whole world, or at least the town, like in the season premiere? Can Timmy wish his way out of it? If yes, then he can unwish Chloe's wishes, just not directly. And if not, huh, Timmy, you gotta run. I think it's just another hoop that they'll probably won't go into the effort to jump through every single time they bring it up. My money is on one of these newer episodes disproving that rule. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about Girly Squirrely. So uh, the last Fairy Out Parents video I did gotten quite a bit of views, huh? Well, two things. I'm going to be doing three Fairy Out Parents videos in the future, two this month and one next month because of a small bet I made on Twitter. None of which have to do with reviewing a season 10 episode directly. Honestly, I'm done with season 10 for a while. I'll come back to it around December, maybe January, if anything, but don't count on it. So the two I'm doing this month will be this extra discussion in another character clash, and then the third one will be rewriting one of the episodes from Fairy Odd Parents. Although from the time of me writing the script and the time of me recording in the middle of that, I saw a season nine or season eight episode that was really bad. And I do want to talk about that, but I might wait until December or January. Like I said, there also seems to be a bit of confusion about the logic behind my title. It does state that this season is the worst season of modern Nickelodeon. And that's one man's opinion. However, if you go to around, let's say, five minutes and 38 seconds in, you'll see on the screen that I'm basing that off of what I've seen so far. Part of my style is always to tell you the reference point of what I'm reviewing. Teen Titans Go Reviews, I told you that I didn't really watch the original. Rocco's Modern Life, I told you that I did not grow up watching this. Very Odd Parents, I tell you I'm a big fan of the series. Pop of Girls, I told you as a child, I was not a big fan, but I grew up to appreciate it. I do this so you know where I'm coming from. Maybe if I did grow up on Teen Titans, I would be either more or less mad at the spinoff, but I can only tell you what I know. I said that I've only watched two episodes, then deemed it the worst season of this year so far. People who bring this up, Forget that I'm saying so far, meaning that there is a margin of error in my reasoning. And I'd like to explain a bit of why I don't think anything can top it and some people have called on in the comments. You see, this person here asks a good question. Would I, or any of you, dislike this episode had it come from a series you already dislike? For example, if you hate Sanjay and Craig, if that show had an episode revolving around an annoying written to be perfect character of an opposite gender, would I or any of you hate this episode so much? Well, for me, the answer is no. Honestly wouldn't care too much. However, someone who's a big fan of the show might not like it at all, and they might make a similar video that I did. I also explained the correlation between my disapproval of season 10 of Fairy Odd Parents being similar to the disapproval of Teen Titans Go and Powerpuff Girls 2016. However, those shows had a reason to change. It's a reboot, and if you watch this video here, then you know that a reboot doesn't necessarily have to correlate with the original story of the franchise. In fact, reboots can restart the franchise. This, however, is a seasonal change and one that I don't like. And I understand that sometimes people aren't going to be okay with change. Some people think that the show is simply not made for me. Yes and no. You see, yes, the show isn't made for me in particular. So if I don't like this change, I know that this show wasn't created for me specifically. But no, the show is made for anyone to like, regardless of demographics. Because companies are companies. They aren't going to turn off your TV if you're an adult watching watching the show because money is money. Hell, I get very old people and very young people watching my videos. You think I'm not gonna accept the views? Tell that way of thinking to my style savvy game. Tell that to all the males, brony or not, that enjoy My Little Pony, that enjoy Powerpuff Girls, 16, Totally Spies, and any other show that is targeted towards women. Tell that to the people who actually enjoy the reboots of Ben 10, Powerpuff Girls, Looney Tunes, Scooby-Doo, and Teen Titans. Change isn't always going to separate the old and the new fans, is my point. Old fans can like the change 
change if they deem it good. Isn't that right, fans of Season 9 Spongebob? Isn't that right, fans of Season 10 Fairy Odd Parents? I'm just one man that deems that the season is not for me, and I don't like the episode for many reasons. One reason is because of Chloe, and I've explained this many times, so I'd like to get to the main point. Many people have come up with simple fixes to her, or why she can be replaced very easily and benefit everyone. Many people who can replace her can most likely do it. They are often seen as more miserable than her. And another reason I think this is going to stay the worst is because honestly this has been like this for a couple of seasons. Yeah guys, Fairy Odd Parents has been struggling for a while. It only just got to this point where it's dead or dying to most people. And it's been on the decline. And unlike Spongebob, it hasn't redeemed itself. Now, I usually don't advocate for spinoffs after the mediocre Planet Sheen, but maybe that would be better. Having Fairy Odd Parents go off in a bang and having a new Fairy Odd Parents, or a new name, be for the newer generation. And I can respect that more, but all of this is part of one series. So yes, that does bring down the series as a whole. And here's another reason why I don't like the season as a whole. Of the changes, it fails on two major parts. You see, Fairy Odd Parents is supposed to be a show revolving around immersing yourself into the show. Kids running the world? Cool. Most wanted kid? Cool. Skating down the biggest ramp? Cool. Getting stuck with the new kid in class who's better than you in every single way and having to share a part of your life with this person? To me, that's not cool. Chloe is not relatable at all, especially for a town like Dimsdale, where all children are seen being miserable from time to time for a reason. And off the top of my head, isn't Dinkelberg supposed to be perfect? And he's seen as the enemy to some people in the series. I've kind of explained here in my character clash why Chloe as a character really cannot be a protagonist the way that she's written. Just off the top of my head, Chester and his dad, Tootie and his parents, Emma and his boil, Veronica and her identity, AJ with Francis, in fact nearly every child with Francis actually. Trixie even. If she isn't told that she's pretty all the time, she has a mental breakdown. And that sounds like misery to me. The first episode did not explain why she got fairies, point blank. And it's really insulting that they bring it up just to not explain why. So already she's out of priority or privilege. And I explain here that basically each character is built off a of priority, so why shouldn't I see her as the enemy? Also, trust me guys, it isn't just Chloe. It's the writing too. The episodes feel loud and fast when before it wasn't really this harsh. It seems like they're brute forcing these episodes with their reusing of jokes. And then the opposite happens for example, in their shouting of words when it doesn't make it any more funny. The pacing is very terrible sometimes, and the show feels wacky just for the sake of being wacky. And some people have questioned my purpose of pointing out animation errors. Well, here's how I see it. A professional should be judged at a professional standpoint. If a third grader was judged from a doctorate's point of view, he would most likely be seen as dumb. However, if a doctor was judged from a third grader's point of view, he would be getting nearly everything right. Should a professional made for national or international television television show in this modern age of cartoons have glaring and blatant animation errors not only called out by me but other reviewers as well and it's not that i'm analyzing this frame by frame i usually see these on the first time on my honor the mistakes here are so frustratingly simple to fix and you don't have to take my word for it that's the best thing about this Take these people that I'm showing you on the screen. A group of people have found simple solutions and I bet if you dislike this episode, you can too. They just know they don't have to fix it. They know a good million or so will watch it and love it. They don't know how to fix mistakes. Take Sparky for example. They removed him from the show because of negative feedback. So let me get this straight. The problem was that the character was getting negative feedback for being unnecessary and annoying. So they fix it by adding a character that is unnecessary and annoying. The only difference is that Sparky really did not care about trends. I honestly feel like a good portion of this comment section has written out a large part of why this episode is bad, but I would take it a step further and say that this episode is deplorable. They took an average kid who no one understands and made him your cool kid that only shallow, trendy bandwagon fans can relate to, in my opinion. It's a shell of a show to me, and to me, that is just very offensive. I guess in some respects, the moral is, be yourself. Unless the money is in trends and surface deep morals, then no, don't be yourself. And I can only speak for myself. So my final word on this is that I think that this will be the worst season of not only Fairy Odd Parents, 2016. So this is probably the last time I'm going to be talking about Girly Squirly. I've talked about it twice. And I really don't want to stretch this out any further. Many of you already know that I don't like season 10. Join me next time where I basically do another character clash. However, I'm going to do it with Timmy and Tootie. And that's probably going to be the last time I bring up season 10 of Fairy Odd Parents for a very, very long 
time. Anyways, guys, I really hope you liked this video. And as always, I hope your time is well spent. And Alpha out. Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show, and this is Extra Discussions, a segment on the animation bonus block that is unscripted with me basically going off of a list of points that I want to talk about for a particular show. Now, why exactly am I doing this particular episode, Yours, Mine, and Mine? It was my number one pick on the top 10 SpongeBob episodes rewritten, and it's also my least favorite SpongeBob episode of all time. And I just want to explain a little bit why.